Hello, this is Kade, and the Hercules Starlifter has been officially launched for a full concept sale. So please join me on the bridge as we give her a little bit of a test drive, going through all the three variants, and after that we're going to do what we do best over here, and that's a bit of theory crafting and speculation to see how these ships will be used within the universe itself. So to start off with, we have of course the C2. The C2 being the civilian variant of the Hercules Starlifter. It's designed primarily to hold more cargo and in exchange it loses armor and some weapons. Weapons wise you only lose one third. It's at the uh, front bottom of the nose for the ship. So sadly that's gone. And we're dropping the armor from my heavy classification to medium. In exchange, we go up to 624 SU worth of cargo, which is a lot, like this thing carries more cargo than the Caterpillar does currently, so that gives you a little bit of a comparison. So what is so interesting about the C2, and in general also the M2? Well, they are cargo ships that are capable of picking up cargo and dropping it off anywhere. And that's the very interesting gameplay I think with these ships. They are designed in a way that they can just literally land, drop the rams down, drive out any cargo, drive up any new cargo, close the rams and take off again. And that's going to allow you to move cargo very flexibly between uh, potentially lesser travel spaces instead of when you're operating a full-on cargo ship like perhaps a whole series. Or a smaller one, perhaps like even a caterpillar, you may not you know, sacrifice some of your cargo space to carry around a cargo loading and unloading vehicle, which you would still need. Like right now, of course, cargo magically appears and disappears inside your hold, but it's safe to assume they will change that at some point. So it becomes a very flexible ship that can go anywhere. Like for example, if you also have a Pioneer, Having a C2 is a very good companion to a Pioneer, because you land the Pioneer, it starts building the outpost buildings, but of course you will need more supplies to keep on building. And that's where the C2 comes in, doesn't matter where you are, as long as there is enough space to park it, you park the C2 and you can reload the Pioneer from the C2. Price wise for the C2, we're looking at $300 wall bond, or $360 if you apply credits or you go for a CCU upgrade. I think overall of all the three variants it's the easiest one to recommend and for me personally it gets a very solid recommendation because I think what, what you're getting for your money, you know, of course this is relative to Star Citizen, is a very good ship. So with the A2 taking a look at, let's go ahead and take a look at the military variation, the M2. The M2 of course sacrifices some cargo space. We lose 25% of our cargo, dropping to 468 SCU. However, in return we get the nose mounted turret, which is of course remote controlled. And our armor goes from a medium classification to a heavy classification. This makes a lot of sense in military applications where, you know, getting shot at is always a larger risk, so they want to mitigate some of that and they want to have a bit more of the means to defend itself. And having the turret on the nose gives it some really nice arcs of fire. So overall, a very sensible ship. Within civilian use, it's a bit of a harder sell to us, especially if you're looking at the price, because we're looking at $400 war bond, or 480 for a credit applied, or CCU upgrade again. So that makes it a relatively more expensive ship, and you lose quite a lot of cargo space. Now if you do expect to be using the Starlifter in more dangerous scenarios where you can get shot at, perhaps the M2 is a sensible buy over the C2. However, I think you also need to consider that if you fly these ships, you do want to fly them with an escort if you go into more dangerous areas of space. And with that in mind, I would say probably the C2 could do the same job. You just clear out any hostiles before you really move in the Starlifters. But the choice is entirely yours. I would say the C2 is the more appealing buy, but the M2 is certainly not a bad option. Then we have the final variation, which is of course the A2, which is the armament ship. 
The A2 sacrifices 50% of cargo space compared to the M2, we're down to just 234. And well, we're getting in return bombs, turrets, and more turrets, and more bombs. That's why I'm calling it a armament ship. So, in essence, this is a pure ground attack ship. And therein lies a little bit of the problems, I think, because we do not have a lot of information or any information like how much you know is ground you know space to ground warfare going to be a thing in in the universe for us as players. Like for the military, of course, it's going to happen a lot. Like within lore, a ship like this makes perfect sense. However, within civilian hands and civilian operations, I'm not really sure, especially when we're looking at the price point. The price point comes in at $600 war bond and $700 when credits are applied or a CCU upgrade is used. That means that it's twice as expensive as the C2 variant. And well, yeah, of course you're getting a full-on military ship in return, but if you're looking at the HG Dynamics Hammerhead, which comes in at 650 I think right now that sounds like a lot more of an appealing buy over the A2 because the hammerhead is going to be operating in space and of course if you want to you can also use a turret to shoot down to the ground it just does not seem to be like the A2 will just you know, it will be doing better it has the bombs but you can probably load bombs on other ships as well so it's a really really high price point for a ship that has right now a fairly unknown purpose within the game for us as players and as a result of that I would not recommend anybody to buy this particular variant unless you really believe like yeah they're gonna be used for this or I'm going to find the use for that then sure go ahead but I think you lose too much of the other capabilities you're going too heavily focused towards a singular role for a ship of this price point so that's my personal opinion of course and with that we have all of the three variants quickly discussed. So to recap, C2, solid recommendation, M2, soft recommendation if you think you need the additional armor and weapons over the C2 and how are you losing the cargo space. A2 right now seems too dedicated towards a single goal and that playstyle is not really debated, discussed or shown within Star Citizen so as a result I do not recommend this ship. With that all said, let's go ahead and uh, go into our beloved theory crafting and speculation. So, how are we going to be using these ships in the persistent universe? Well, that of course depends on which one you're gonna get. If we're starting off again with the C2, it is going to be, in my opinion, the most interesting cargo ship right now. And the reasoning I'm saying that is that I've got a very good cargo capacity. It's fairly large, but it is not insanely large considering it's a two-man ship. And it can pick up cargo and drop it off anywhere within the universe where you can land on something at least. And I think that will make the cargo move in gameplay a lot more dynamic. Whereas if you compare it to a whole series, which is really limited to moving cargo between established uh, outposts that have the facilities to unload ships like that, the C2 doesn't care, it will just literally drop down to a shed in the middle of nowhere and drop off somebody's uh, cyclone that they ordered. Ask the uh, person that is living in the shed to sign off for it and they will take off again. So the amount of flexibility that comes with the C2 makes it really appealing in my opinion. And overall, it also just, as a side note, it's a fairly pretty looking ship in my opinion, so yeah. I kind of like it. Uh, and that's very important as well. Like, do you like the design of the ships? And, you know, if you don't like the design of a ship, I think it's always a much harder sell for you, yourself personally. The M2, of course, is going to be doing much what the C2 can do. Lose some of the cargo capacity, but in return, it can take more of a hit and has a bit of a better chance of fending for itself. However, I would say make no mistake. If you're flying these things solo and smaller ships will come in to get you it doesn't matter which variant you fly, you're going to be screwed. Because you're flying a relatively large ship, it is going to be far more sluggish, and there are a lot of dead zones uh, on which you can approach, even the A2 variant, and they have no means of really shooting at you. 
which is again why the Hammerhead is such a nice deal if you're looking at a combat ship, because it has the capability of you know covering all of the arcs of fire. But you gotta understand the Hammerhead is of course a pure combat ship, whereas the C2 and M2 are really cargo ships. They're not designed to be a primary combat ship, it's just they have some means of defending themselves. Love this shot by the way. So C2, M2, they're really the cargo movers. Nice ships, very flexible, and overall I think it's going to be you know, not too complicated in their roles within the universe. They can just go anywhere and pick up or unload cargo there at whatever location they want to. And that's going to be allowing you as a operator to be very flexible and I think make a good amount of uh, credits within the universe. Now if we're going to look at the A2, as I said this thing is such a dedicated ground attack ship that I just do not see it going to be used enough for us as, a, as civilians. Like, How often are we going to need the ability to completely carpet bomb an area or just to hover this thing overhead and start blasting away at anything? How often will that happen? We just don't know yet. Like, is it going to be a case that in unclaimed systems people can actually say like, I'm going to claim this space and I'm going to defend it and others will say, yeah, we don't like it, so we will attack it. Those things can happen. I mean, if you look at EVE Online, that's the whole basis behind EVE Online. So I can see it happen, but the point is we just don't know enough information yet. And that is why this ship is going to be really tricky. However, if we're going to assume that those things will happen, then yes, the A2 is going to be an absolute nightmare if you're defending on the ground and you lost the space battle. Because that's one of the things you have to realize. Before the A2 can be employed, the space battle needs to have been won. Because if the space battle is not won, you're not going to have any use of carpet bombing the area because you can't do anything because you're still fighting in space and they will just shoot down your, tra your transports. And that's a little bit of the tricky, like, so if defending in space is your first layer of defense, you know, how much are people going to reinforce their ground site? You know, they will probably reinforce them somewhat to just deal with light raiders and stuff like that, but are they going to reinforce it enough that you need something like an A2 to completely neutralize defenses there? And that's, again, you know, how will people play around with it? Because Make no mistake, if, if people are actually claiming areas on planets and start to defend them, they likely do it because they can make money from them. If the areas are not capable of generating revenue, people are not interested in them. It's like all the wars and games like this will be fought over resources. Because resources is just what makes uh, things interesting. You know? more, if you get more resources, you can do more things and you can grow more, etc, etc. But resources are nice if you're going to put a lot of in, lot of investment into defenses. Like whatever you put into defenses is, you know, not things you can be using elsewhere. So it's a bit hard to say. Like what will really happen with these uh, kind of uh, scenarios where you're talking about perhaps attacking a ground-based location from that's all held by another player organization. What do you think? Let's. If it is the case, then yeah, of course the A2 is going to be really effective at what it does. But I would say one more note of caution here is like, if you want to take something over, bombing it to smithereens is not always the best option, because if you bomb something to smithereens, it means you have to rebuild it. So, like, if you know there is a decent amount of defense there, it may still be interesting to just land on the outskirts and take it over on food so that you do not destroy everything that's there which means like you don't have to go through the expenditure of rebuilding it and the A2 of course again will come into play there you just don't drop the bombs or maybe you drop smaller bombs which are more focused and guided but you also got all of those turrets on there we're looking at a mix of size 3, size 4 and size 5 weapons so yeah they will be giving any form of defenders a really hard time if they don't have enough you know ground to air firepower to deal with these ships 
and considering the shielding they have, especially with the A2 comes with two large size shields, which is more already than Amaret does, heavy armor, any amount of firepower it has, you know, you're gonna need a lot of ground to air firepower in order to deter these ships from just rolling in and first focusing down whatever defensive side you have and then moving onwards to hovering above and blasting away at your tanks and stuff like that. So yeah, depending on how the game will evolve and what will be possible, the A2 can have a fairly major role within organizations that are, you know, have the desire to attack other organizations or attack ground targets that may be held by uh, NPC targets that are, you know, legally able to attack them. Because of course, if you're gonna attack something within UE space, the, na the Navy is gonna have something to say about it. They're not really going to like you, it's going to make life really difficult. I mean, if you compare it again, I'm sorry to do it to even line, but I've been playing the game recently again. Like, yeah, you can do whatever you want, but at some point, it will just limit your options within controlled space. Because within controlled space, you know, you, if you're flying bigger ships, you can't get out of there on time and they will just blow you up. So there are a lot of choices to be made. So the A2 in that aspect is going to be really, really dependent on how the game design will progress and if it will indeed be made, put to any good use. As for the C2 and the M2, I think they're really interesting ships. They're going to be really flexible. And the only thing I do hope they will reconsider is right now they're saying like, yeah, they got bats on board and that's about it. But I think considering we're in space, you know, journeys are longer, small living quarters are really required on this ship. And it shouldn't be too hard to find a space to uh, cram those into a corner somewhere. Like they don't have to be large, like literally just, you know, bunks a place to eat and a place to shower and do your business and that's all you need really. But you know, looking at a caterpillar and stuff like that, these, sh these ships will be in space for days at a time. Like just look at the lore that they have been writing for this ship. So you're in space for days at a time so you want to have some facilities to support people in space for a duration of time. Oh, I think that will pretty much cover the Hercules Starlifter. It's of course a cargo ship for uh, the C2 and M2 variant, so there's only going to be so much that we really can speculate on, because well, a cargo ship is going to be a cargo ship. And A2, of course, as I said, do speculate a bit on it. I can see it being of use, but without having the information and the confirmation of what it can do, I just do not really like the idea of recommending that ship because despite the capabilities we just don't know if those capabilities will be of use to us i hope you found this all uh, somewhat informative interesting whatever if you have different opinions please let them be known of course like these are just my opinions you may have completely different ones you may see things that i'm not seeing you name it you want it drop them down below and as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and listening to me.